Assalamualaikum. This is Snain, and today we're going to talk about the digestive system development. We're going to talk about the four gut into which different derivatives are formed. We're going to talk about the development of esophagus. We're going to talk about the development of stomach, the development of fomental bursa, the development of duodenum. We're going to talk about the development of liver, biliary apparatus. And we're going to talk about the development of pancreas along with our development of the spleen. So let's start. System. Now, digestive system is consist of a tract which extend from mouth to anus. Digestive system development starts as primordial gut during the fourth week of development. The primordial gut consists of head, a tail, and a lateral fold, which is formed by the invagination of the dorsal part of the umbilical vesicle. Here we can see that uh, this is the uh, embryonic plate. And when this embryonic plate undergoes the craniocaudal and the lateral folding, the part of the umbilical vesicle which is here in the yellow is incorporated inside it as the digestive primordial digestive tract. Here it is shown in the yellow color. It consists of a head which is closed by the oropharyngeal membrane and consists of a tail which is closed by the cloacal membrane and a lateral fold which is formed by the invagination of the yolk sac during the folding. Now based upon the arterial supply, the digestive tract is divided into foregut, midgut and hindgut. First talking about the foregut. The foregut derivatives include the primordial pharynx, the lower respiratory tract, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, spleen and the liver pancreas. With the exception of primordial pharynx and the lower respiratory tract, all the other derivatives of foregut are supplied by the celiac trunk. And now talking about the derivatives of foregut, the esophagus. The esophagus is formed in the part of the foregut caudal to the pharynx. Now the primordial pharynx divide by a tracheoesophageal septum into anterior lung bud and the posterior esophagus which elongates and forms uh, the primordial esophagus. Here is the primordial pharynx which is a tube in the cranial portion of the foregut. It divides into anterior respiratory diverticulum and the posterior foregut. Now this uh, uh, separate uh, with the foregut uh, via the tracheoesophageal septum. So it divides into the anterior lung bud and the posterior part of the pharynx which give rise to esophagus. Now the epithelium and glandular portion of the esophagus is formed by the endoderm of the uh, foregut while the muscular portion of the esophagus consists of two parts that is the striated muscular portion and the smooth muscular portion. The superior one third of the esophagus is striated and is formed by the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arches while the inferior two third of the esophagus is smooth and is formed by the surrounding subplanctic mesoderm. Now a fun thing here is that when the esophagus elongates due to the endodermal proliferation it is obliterated. The lumen of esophagus is obliterated during the seventh week. But uh, after the end of the eighth week, the recanalization occurs, which further, which again uh, fills, uh, uh, which um, again empties the lumen of the esophagus. Now, talking about the stomach, the stomach starts as a fusiform enlargement in the caudal part of the foregut. Now, here is the foregut. And an enlargement occurs in its caudal portion, which is the stomach. At its dorsal border, the stomach grows faster than the ventral one and give rise to greater curvature. Another diagram of stomach which uh, uh, starts as a fusiform enlargement in the caudal part of the foregut. Now this line is the dorsal portion of the stomach and this is the ventral portion. Now we can see that this dorsal portion grows faster than the ventral portion and give rise to the greater curvature of the stomach. Now during embryonic development, rotation occurs in the stomach which is mainly due to the enlargement of mesentery organs and the growth of the stomach wall. Now, 
the rotation occurs 90 degree clockwise in the axial plane where in the axial plane and also which if we see through an example considering that this is the stomach this one is the dorsal border and this one is the ventral border so uh, moving uh, seeing it from the dorsal border when the rotation occurs 90 degree clockwise this dorsal border becomes the left border of the stomach and the ventral border which was like this upon rotation becomes the left border of the uh, becomes the right border of the stomach the dorsal one rotates clockwise and becomes the left border while the ventral one rotates clockwise and becomes the right border of the stomach also the cranial region of the stomach Beca uh, goes to the left and inferiorly while the caudal region of the stomach goes to right and superiorly. Here we can see that the greater curvature which was on the dorsal aspect upon rotation moved to the left side of the stomach while the lesser curvature which was on the ventral aspect moved to the right side of the stomach. Also the cranial portion of the stomach moves inferiorly a little inferiorly and to the left a little left while the caudal portion of the stomach moves a little superiorly and a little to the right of the a little to the right of the stomach now mesentery of the stomach mesentery is a double layer of peritoneum which covers a viscera so mesentery of the stomach includes a ventral mesentery and a dorsal mesentery in the diagram we can see that this is the ventral aspect and this is the dorsal aspect of the embryo the mesentery which is connecting the uh, stomach to the ventral wall is known as the primordial ventral mesentery and the mesentery which is uh, connecting it to the dorsal wall of the uh, uh, embryo is known as the primordial dorsal mesentery now the development of a mental bursa the dorsal mesentery we here known as the dorsal mesogastrium uh, a cleft a number of clefts develop in the dorsal mesogastrium which then quails later to form a depression in the dorsal mesogastrium which is known as the omental bursa here in the transverse section we can see that this is the dorsal mesogastrium or dorsal mesentery clefts form in the dorsal mesogastrium which then combine together to form a depression in the dorsal mesogastrium known as the omental bursa this depression now when rotation of the stomach occurs which is 90 degree clockwise this bursa further uh, enlarges and uh, uh, and communicates with the peritoneal cavity with the omental foramen this bursa is known as the omental bursa so the omental bursa due to uh, rotation uh, dorsal to the dorsal mesogastrium move to the left and the bursa enlarge as I have explained earlier. Now further enlargement of the bursa in the upper and the lower portion divides it into superior and inferior recesses. The superior recesses where the recess the upper part of the superior recess when hindered by the diaphragm give rise to the infracardiac bursa while the remaining recess is below the diaphragm the inferior recess give rise to the greater omentum here in this side view the sagittal view we can see that this is the omental bursa which uh, uh, grows cranially and caudally and also transversely when it grows caudally the uh, inferior recess is formed and when it grows cranially the superior recess is formed now when the omental bursa in the inferior recess grows downward it give rise to the greater omentum important thing about greater momentum is when it grows inferiorly it it is represented as a two leaf of uh, two leaflets of peritoneum which passes or cover the uh, the transverse colon and the small intestine starting from the stomach later on uh, the two leaflets combine fuse together to form a single leaflet of the greater momentum which covered the transverse colon and the small intestine so the double layer uh, sac of uh, that is a greater momentum extending over the transverse colon and small intestine fuses later to form a single layer sac now talking about the duodenum 
the duodenum starts from the early fourth week of the development okay so duodenum is divided into two parts that is a part proximal to the origin of the bile duct and a part distal to the origin of bile duct the part proximal to the origin of bile duct comes from the fore duct and is intraperitoneal intraperitoneal means that the peritoneal membrane covers it and then attaches to the posterior abdominal wall and this portion is supplied by the celiac trunk while the distal portion is retroperitoneal retroperitoneal means that if this is the uh, uh, posterior abdominal wall the and this is the viscera the viscera is direct contact with the posterior abdominal wall and then the mesentery covers it up so the it, the distal portion is retroperitoneal it is uh, the, formed from the mid gut and supplied by the superior mesenteric artery now during the fifth and sixth week the lumen of the duodenum is obliterated due to proliferation of the epithelium of duodenum now this uh, epith uh, this obliterated epithelium uh, in this epithelium epithelium vacuoles develop by the process of vacuolation and when these vacuole fuse together and uh, undergoes the process of apoptosis the epithelial cell they are recanalized and the duodenum is again uh, the lumen is uh, emptied here the wall of the duodenum and the epithelial plaque due to the proliferation of epithelial cells then the vacuoles develop in the epithelium okay uh, in the lumen when these vacuoles fuse and undergo apoptosis the recanalization occurs and form the normal lumen of the duodenum now talking about the development of liver and the biliary apparatus the liver starts as a hepatic diverticulum which invades into the ventral mesentery or mesogastrium here is the ventral mesentery mesogastrium and the dorsal mesentery or mesogastrium now here the hepatic uh, diverticulum develops in the caudal part of the foregut in and invaginates the ventral mesogastrium so this hepatic part consists of a liver prime it consists of a cranial part and caudal part the cranial part consists of the liver primordium and the caudal part consists of the gall bladder primordium here the cranial the upper portion is the liver primordium while the dorsal portion is the gall bladder primordium now from the liver primordium the endoderm of the primordium give rise to hepatic cords and the intrahepatic part of the biliary ducts when these hepatic cord undergo anastomosis they give rise to the liver sinusoids while the fibrous and the hematopoietic tissues of the liver are formed from the surrounding mesoderm of the liver primordium as well the cuffer cells of the liver primordium are formed from the precursor cells which move from the umbilical vesicle into the liver primordium now talking about the gall bladder primordium the gall bladder primordium give rise to gall bladder and the cystic duct from the stalk it also give rise to the bile duct which connects the hepatic duct and the cystic duct to the duodenum here we can see that the gall bladder is formed from the gall bladder primordium and the hepatic duct is coming from the liver this hepatic duct and the stalk of the primordium that is the cystic duct combine together to form a single bile duct which opens into the duodenum now the bile duct opens first ventral to the duodenum and then dorsal to the duodenum when it undergoes rotation talking about pancreas pancreas develops from the pancreatic bud which has a dorsal and the ventral portion now in the same area of uh, liver and gall bladder primordium there is a ventral bud of pancreas and the dorsal bud of pancreas ventral bud give rise to the uncinate process and the part of the head of the pancreas while the rest comes from the dorsal bud both of these undergo rotation now during rotation the ventral pancreatic bud fuses with the dorsal pancreatic bud here is the cut section denoting the ventral pancreatic bud and the dorsal pancreatic bud when the rotation of the stomach occurs in the clockwise direction the ventral pancreatic buds move dorsally 
in a uh, close to the dorsal pancreatic bud and then fuses with the dorsal pancreatic bud now the main pancreatic bud arises from the dorsal pancreatic bud while the accessory pancreatic bud arises from the uh, dorsal the main pancreatic bud from the ventral pancreatic bud while the um, accessory one arises from the dorsal pancreatic bud the accessory one opens in the minor duodenal papillae of uh, the uh, duodenum and uh, um, degenerates with time also during rotation the pancreas becomes retroperitoneal with duodenum here in the cut section this is the duodenum anteriorly and posterior to it is pancreas that is the dorsal part dorsally pancreas is present during rotation that is clockwise rotation the duodenum goes like this and the pancreas along with goes like this so the duodenum and pancreas both attach directly to the posterior abdominal wall and since they are attaching directly to the posterior abdominal wall they become retroperitoneal now histogenesis of the pancreas include the parenchyma the pancreatic component and the connective tissue and interlobal septa the parenchyma of the pancreas develops from the endoderm of the pancreatic bud while the pancreatic components include the acini and islets the acini develop from the cells which surround the tubules formed from the endoderm while the islets are formed from the cells which surround the acini now the connective tissue and interlobal septa of the pancreas develop from the surrounding splanchnic mesenchyme or mesoderm lastly spleen the spleen is formed from the splenic primordium during the fifth week here this is the visceral uh, ventral mesogastrium and this is the dorsal mesogastrium so the spleen is formed in the dorsal mesogastrium behind the stomach while the liver is formed in the ventral mesogastrium in front of the stomach so the spleen in the new in the in intraembryonic life is lobulated but after birth the lobule disappear and um, septas remain now due to rotation the mesogastrium uh, which is a dorsal mesogastrium attached to the spleen fuses with the peritoneum over the left kidney and this gives rise to the splenorenal ligament through which this splenic artery passes through and this is the largest branch of the celiac trunk here the same section liver ventral then stomach and dorsally the spleen now the dorsal mesogastrium of the spleen when it undergoes rotation it fuses with the here is the left kidney it fuses with the upper part of the peritoneum of the kidney giving rise to the splenorenal ligament through which the splenic artery passes and this is the largest branch of the celiac trunk one thing we forgot to mention was the mesentery of the liver now as i have explained earlier that the liver is formed in the ventral mesogastrium so the ventral mesogastrium which is present anterior to the liver give rise to the falciform ligament while the mesogastrium present posterior to the ligament give rise to the hepatogastric ligament also since the liver is attached below with the duodenum it also give rise to the hepatoduodenal ligament that was all for today thank you yep.